Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fire in the Hole by Mick Miller. The game is currently on Kickstarter, plays two to four players, and takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes to play the game. And in the game Fire in the Hole, players are going to gather their pirate cards. They're going to draw a card, play a card, and then based on what the die says, all players or one player is going to throw their cannonballs into the ship. Well, what's the purpose of that? Well, they need to get four in a row. If they can get four cannonballs in, some type of row. It could be like a Z-shape or an L or a straight line. They will win the game. Now, there's a bunch of crazy stuff that can happen in the game, whether it be the balls are bouncing out or flying all over the place. The dreaded black cannonball can hit a square and annihilate all players' cannonballs surrounding it. A black spot hits the ship, preventing balls from going in the location. Or, of course, the board itself will rotate around and change positioning of the ship to making it more challenging or easier for you to get your cannonballs in the right position. In the game goes around the table until somebody gets those four in a row. Draw a card, play a card, throw the cannonballs, and score for victory in the game Fire in the Hole. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the game is set up, how it's played, and my review. So Fire in the Hole is a 100% biodegradable board game that is also a pop-up game. It is foldable and it starts looking like a booklet and you're going to open it up. You are going to extend the board itself, place the cards on the card deck, take out the mast, and place it on top of the ship. Every single player is going to get six cannonballs of their color, and they're going to place the black pirate ball and, of course, the uh, black spot somewhere within reach of all players. Give each player an eye patch, which may or may not be used for the duration of the game, and then every player is going to draw four cards after the deck is shuffled. And then go ahead and place the die next to everybody and begin. When you begin the game, it's very, very simple and straightforward, but with a lot of uh, unique strategy involved to getting those pirate cannonballs inside the ship, which let's go into the gameplay. So I already previously discussed how the game works. It's actually that simple. You draw your four cards. You're going to draw one card at the beginning of your turn. You will play one of these cards. Once you play one of the cards, like fire, for instance, the most common card, you're going to then roll the die. On the die, it will say solo fire or it will say all fire. If it says all, everyone will fire based on the conditions. If it says solo, then only you will fire based on the conditions. And there are many different types of conditions, whether it be just firing the ball, where you have your hand uh, adjusted so that your arm uh, is facing your uh, waist, and then you're going to throw it without moving your arm there. Uh, maybe it's a pirate patch, where you have to use this pirate patch. Or perhaps it's going to be a blind throw, where you have to close your eyes. And another one could be a double barrel fire, where you're throwing with both of your hands. There's other some interesting things that can happen in the game. You can play a card, lets you draw additional cards and play one of those, steal a card from somebody's hand, rotate the board, place a black spot, or throw the dreaded black cannonball. And after you have played a card, rolled the die, and then had you or everyone throw a cannonball, it's the next player's turn. They will draw a card, they will play a card, they will roll the die, and so on and so forth, up until the point where you get four in a row. And by four in a row, I mean you literally have to get uh, them just touching. Four of your cannonballs touching as long as they are adjacent to each other, not diagonally. Then you'll win the game the moment that happens. Easier said than done, of course. Let's now talk about my review of the game. So I saw Fire in the Hole on Kickstarter when it first started out, and I was uh, extremely enamored with it. I was interested in the video. I thought they did an excellent job with that. They drew me in even before I understood how to play the game because the game is fully biodegradable. It is a cool pop-up book. And, of course, the fact that they've just made some really fun piratey marketing. If you're a big fan of pirate games, this is going to be something you're going to want to take a look at because they threw and drenched this game full of the uh, theme. What I did not know, what I was not expecting, was the quality of the game and the components. I was nervous because, let me fix my eye patch. <laughs> the uh, game, usually with pop-up books, they're not really all that sturdy, and uh, you can be worried about after you open it enough times, things are gonna tear or mess up. Uh, this has been passed around a bit, and uh, I have now had it, and let me just tell you that the quality is Excellent. This is, of course, a prototype for the most part, I think. Now, there's going to be additional stuff and components, but what is here is excellent. The quality is really great. Everything fits in really nicely and comes out really nicely as well. And the book is easy to utilize and the game is easy to set up as well. And I'm also not super worried about, you know, my eye patch makes it more difficult to put that in, uh, about uh, taking some balls and throwing at this stuff. It's not going to see any rips or tears. Everything is really, really sturdy. So the quality of the components of this game is Excellent. You have your little cannonballs, they're little cotton balls they're going to be throwing, and they bounce. They can make others bounce out, and you're just trying to fill your four in the row area on the, on the board here. And uh, 
it is easier said than done. And if you have all your balls used, you're going to then need to take one back or two, depending on if it's a double barrel throw or not, and then you can use them once again. And the challenge is getting them in the right spot. If you're a big fan of something like, I don't know, basketball, or maybe like more like beer pong, I suppose, then this is going to be a game you're going to enjoy. Uh, this is what I would assume originally would be more of a kid's game. Uh, after playing with a ton of adults, I realized that this game is going to be uh, a game for all audiences. Uh, just the theme alone makes the game fun. People are constantly laughing throughout the entire time and they're having a great time playing this game. I was originally on the computer for the live stream because we did a stream for this game as well. And uh, I wanted to jump in and play. And in fact, I did because I saw how much fun they were having and I wanted to have fun as well. The table presence of the game is excellent. When you see this game and what people are doing, you immediately want to jump into this dexterity game and play it, start using your pirate words and your pirate voices and, and basically just toss little balls of cotton inside of a cardboard ship. It seems weird, but this game does everything I would have wanted from a game that is a dexterity game. This is uh, a dexterity game that is probably my favorite of the year so far. Uh, yeah, I can I can easily say that because everyone it was just just seeing people playing the game and how much fun they were having made me so interested in partaking in it. And I was already enamored with it before because of the fun little pirate theme song that they included in the video and uh, the high quality marketing. This game has been everywhere and it's doing really well. This, the, there's a lot of steam going on for this game, even though the pirate ship doesn't use steam because it uses sails. <laughs> okay, terrible joke. But I think you get the idea. The, the quality, the artwork, the theme works with the game. The one thing that draws it back, I suppose, is for those of you who are looking for a more deep strategy style game, one of those modern gamers who's looking for a deep Euro, it's not going to be for you. This is literally as I described it. You'd play a card, roll the die, and then you throw little balls of cotton into a ship. But what's there is great. If this is what you're looking for, if you're looking for a dexterity family style game or something that's going to be a drinking game for parties, whenever you miss or whenever you, uh, I don't know, lose one of your balls or something like that, you can make this into a, a simple drinking game that works very well. I think this is going to see a lot of play at a lot of parties. Uh, this is a game I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be getting. This is a game I, I, I definitely want. And it's because I can easily leave this out on a table and walk away and somebody's going to grab the rule book and in three seconds, they're gonna start throwing balls and yelling out ARGs and R and O and Bilge Rat and the, the deck, etc. Matey, you, you get the idea. <laughs> and even the pirate patches is super fun. I, I am enamored with this game. I enjoy it quite a bit. If this is something that you saw and it looked interesting to you, I can tell you that the quality of the components is great. Uh, the fact that it folds up is wonderful and this is an altogether just good time. It works so well. This is something that I would strongly recommend you getting and this is going to get my seal of approval. This is probably the first uh, dexterity style family game I have given a uh, seal of approval, but the way they did this and, and how they made this like just the whole campaign, just they just did an excellent job. I am in love with fire in the hole. Beware all ye who open. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Fire in the Hole. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description uh, for Kickstarter. It will still be there. I think there'll probably be a post campaign link if you want to go ahead and pick it up as well. Um, I, yeah, I, I just, I just love this game. It's super fun. And I didn't want to spoil all the cards in the game because there's a ton of stuff that I didn't talk about as far as, not a ton, but quite a few of the things that you can uh, see how they work. I, I hope they do combinations of cards. I wanna see what the other, other stuff they're going to be including in it, because I know that there's some additional expansion stuff and Kickstarter stuff that is included if you back the big pledge, which is what I'm going to get. So check our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do blog posts and giveaways. We do uh, reviews, uh, non-video, <laughs> written. So if you're at work and you wanna watch, read something real quick in between lunch, uh, you can do that. And it's for different games. It's not gonna be the same games as our videos. So that way you have a plethora of different content. And of course, the live stream is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Sometimes we do one at 5.30 on YouTube as well. It's like a bonus stream. And we play games just like this one. And in fact, we did play this one and we played it last night on Sunday. So you can watch us play and determine for yourself if it is as fun as I am saying it is. And uh, I think you will uh, I think you will agree that people were having a good time with this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to firing in the hole with you next time. I was gonna do a voice for the whole video, but I remember going back to my era of Kingdoms video where I did this like long voice thing for the whole video and people complained, like I got more complaints in that video than anything else. Uh, so I, I didn't do that, but I wanted to do it at the end because I, I, I just, I like doing pirate voices. All right, all right, uh, goodbye.